We're making pulled pork. You got a, this is a pork butt, a Boston butt or pork shoulder. Uh, I got it on sale at my butcher. You have to pat it dry. Uh, in fact, I had them cut it in half because this is like half of one. This is huge. It's a lot of meat. Sometimes I even cut these in half and you can freeze them and save them. Totally fine. This is really simple. This is a couple days before I even want to cook it. Uh, the first thing we got to do, and the only thing we got to do today, is just salt it. Uh, every time we get a big hunk of meat, we salt it. It's going to do a few things. We've talked about it before, but we're going to talk about it every time. It seasons the meat, which is obviously very important. You want it to be tasty. It draws moisture from the surface, and it helps retain moisture in the center. Uh, there's actually science that proves this, if you want to look it up in the food lab. All right, so it's the day after we salted it. You can see that it has, like, pox in the uh, fat from where the salt is. You can still see, like, it's sitting on top. Uh, the muscle uh, has started to obviously dry a little bit. This is what we want. It's still, you know, wet to the, or not wet to the touch, but moist to the touch. It's tacky. Um, but now we're making a rub for this. Uh, you can use whatever you want. Uh, I have, you know, pre-made things, uh, but I have all these whole spices, so I have black peppercorn in here in my mortar and pestle, uh, yellow mustard seed, cumin, salt, uh, and I have quite a bit of it. Uh, I'm just gonna grind this up, uh, and then to that, I'm going to add brown sugar, onion powder, roasted garlic stuff, uh, and also... Uh, I have some of this from Michael Twitty, who is a chef on the internet, uh, who put out this uh, barbecue spice, and it's really good. It has uh, chili pepper, onion, garlic, turbinado, sugar, apple cider vinegar. I don't, I don't have enough to like do the whole thing, but I'm just going to add this to it, give it some barbecue -y notes. Uh, so I'm going to grind the crap out of this uh, and mix all this together. Uh, and I'll be right back. All right, took some effort to grind my own spices, but it was worth it. Uh, this is, it's got a little kick to it. It's sweet, it's salty. I got a little lemon pepper in there as well, so we have a little citrus kick. In fact, just a little bit more because I added some more stuff. It, I mean, this recipe specifically, it doesn't matter. You can put uh, whatever you would like on there. If it's some, like anything, like, you know, Montreal steak seasoning, you just get one of these. Uh, I don't know, you got all sorts of stuff. Um, it is to your taste, so there's no specific recipe for this. Uh, if you want to follow this along, this is what I used. Just do it to taste. Uh, lick your pinky, stick it in there, take a, take a taste, and if you like the taste of that, then you'll like it on the pork. So, that's really my only tip. Uh, there's no real hard and fast rules. Whatever you have in your pantry is definitely good for this. So, uh, next thing we need... Uh, is to cover this in oil. Uh, this is, while it's tacky, uh, it is not uh, going to help this stick a ton. So, uh, just some olive oil and then, we don't need a ton. This is gonna be what we use for the whole thing. So just a nice thin layer of oil. Remember, we've already salted this. All right, so I'm using all of this so I can put my hands in it, so. Just sprinkle it on liberally. We want to cover the whole thing if we can. I hope I have enough. Uh, and if you have to make more, then make more. All right. Uh, I'm also going to grab the stuff from off the bottom of this and repurpose it. Uh, I'm not going to waste any of this rub because I don't want to spend the time to grind way more, uh, but we want to use, uh, I don't know, like for something this big, this is pretty big pork shoulder, uh, well, half of one. So, I don't know, like a cup or two uh, of rub. Uh, and this is all there is to it, to the day two preparation. Beautiful. Need some on here, so I have this grate that uh, I did not prepare a landing zone for. So we're gonna be we're gonna be barbaric. Doesn't matter. This isn't this doesn't have to be a pretty process. Uh, look at this. You know we're not. Who's who's judging you? you? Judging yourself too hard? Don't worry about it. Just get this baby covered, huh? Doesn't matter. Quick and dirty. 
It doesn't matter how to do it. Pat that baby dry. All right, I'm getting a little too excited about this process. Or maybe, maybe I'm not excited enough. This is gonna be pulled pork. Everybody loves pulled pork. Even people who don't like it, respect it, right? Get in every nook and cranny, you see this kind of cranny happening? Get it going. Nooks, no match. Look at that, there's some nooks. Got them. Yeah. Looking for crannies? Oh man. All right, you should enjoy this process. Get the kids involved. Do you have kids? If you don't have kids, uh, I mean, just, it's more for you. All right, that is not taking on any more of this. Uh, so, I am just going to scoop up as much as I can. And really try to push it, pack it. Set it on top. This fat is gonna render in the oven. And this stuff will wash down. Okay. All right, when your pork is looking nice and rubbed, it's time to put it back in the fridge uh, for a day. Overnight, you could also do this like a couple hours. You know, I did two days. If you don't have that kind of time, you can do this whole process within 12 hours, probably. It'll just be better the longer you wait. Uh, but I wouldn't do it less. This is a big piece of meat, and you don't want all the flavor on the outside. You do want it to penetrate down through, uh, so that when we shred it, we'll have, you know, nice seasoned stuff all the way through, and not just like bites of it, and then sort of plain, bland pork that really requires just like a ton of sauce. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we're done. No, well, we're not done. We're done with this part. We'll be back tomorrow, and essentially what we're gonna do is turn the oven on to 250 and cook this until it has an internal temperature of 205, which is pretty high, but that's how you get pulled pork. Uh, this bone in here is gonna come loose of the meat. This fat's gonna render out. It's gonna be great. Oh, in fact, let me do a couple, one more thing. Let's stab. Let's just stab this pork fat, just to kind of help it run around. You can do this to chicken fat too, like chicken breasts. They have the fat deposits poking through. It'll help. All right, that's it. Now we're done. Perfect. All right, it's pulled pork day. This has been a day salted, a day with the seasoning on it. Uh, and now it is time to actually cook it. Uh, and we're gonna take this probe, uh, it's set to 205, so we want the internal temperature of pulled pork to get to 205 degrees uh, or so, like 200, 215, some people uh, debate it. 205 is fine, we're gonna have some carryover cooking. Um, so if you look on the side of this, hopefully it doesn't slide too far, there's a, it does. Uh, there's a bone in there. I want this probe to go right above the bone It'll be the coldest spot, and then all the way in. Uh, if you don't have a probe, uh, it's about two hours per pound at 225 to get this. Obviously, you're gonna have a more perfect situation if you know the actual internal temperature of this. Uh, these are really cheap uh, and totally worth it if you cook big hunks of meat ever. Uh, and if you don't, this is really worth it. If you cook like, you know, small chicken breasts and stuff, uh, something like this, you can also get a more expensive one that's an instant read. Uh, obviously the only difference is if you use something like this, you're going to have to check it multiple times throughout the cooking process and poke a few holes in it, which wouldn't really matter. We're shredding this anyway. Uh, but for something like a big roast or something, you might not want to do that. And it's just more tedious. This, I can just set it and forget it and walk away. And when this beeps, I'm going to come get it and then we're going to let it rest and then we'll shred it and that'll be it. Uh, this is not a lot of active time, as you can tell. A lot of waiting around for pork to be pork. So, <laughs> just take this and pop it in the oven. <clears throat> uh, and that's literally it. So, just put this right here. Done! Uh, we'll wait. I don't know how long this is going to take. It's 4 o'clock now. I will let you know how long it took. Alright, I just pulled it out. It took 14 hours or so. Uh, I think my oven is a little uh, lower than it should be. I think I have to get a thing changed. But uh, nonetheless, 
Uh, I Once it hit about 180 degrees on the inside, I raised it to uh, a higher temperature, about 300 or something, to get a little crust on the outside. Um, if you touch this, like it starts to get a little crusty. Here, I can give you a, 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 a crusty... And that's what I want. Uh, maybe you don't want nice crispies. Uh, and then on the inside, uh, it's going to be quite uh, tender and juicy. However, uh, we can't just uh, start digging into this uh, right now. Um, we need to let this rest. So I am going to cover it with uh, like a tin foil tent, essentially, uh, and let this uh, rest uh, slightly covered, not 100%. Um, and uh, come down a little bit, retain some moisture, and then we'll shred it. Uh, so I'm actually just going to take a nap. Uh, we're not going to shred the whole thing, but uh, I can show you sort of the what we're looking at here. Uh, you can just see, like, with a fork, it pulls right out. Uh, and so you're going to have, like, this crispy aspect to it, which is going to be delicious. It's obviously going to be very tender. It'll just sh It'll just shred apart. And then you can add any sauce or anything you want. I usually keep it naked and then add sauce when I serve it. Uh, this will also, once you shred it, uh, will be able to be reheated uh, at least, you know, three times. The whole batch, you could probably reheat it three times. It would be good. Mm, that's so good. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's seasoned all the way through because we salted it early. Um... The bark itself on the outside is, you know, you, you, you know, you can see these juices, like if I just press into it. Beautiful. Uh, so I'm not going to sit here and pick at the whole thing, although I have a couple more bites. I want this to rest. It'll be better that way. All right. I'll we'll be back in a little while. All right, so as far as the covering, I guess I should so, show you, is it's not that serious, you know. Uh, it's just tented, essentially, with two pieces of foil. Uh, one this way, one this way. Uh, you don't have to wrap it tight or anything. You just kind of want to tent it up. In warmer weather, uh, which it's not right now, you would keep, like, I don't know, any bugs or anything that might be flying around your house. You open the door and shut a lot. But really what this is, uh, is to keep a little bit of that thermal activity, uh, you know, keeping this uh, warm and uh, really allowing it to have a good amount of time to not just like get cooled by the air here but rather like come up come down uh slowly uh as it uh gets back to temp so uh yeah it'll take a few hours worth a nap or a thing this takes a while this method but it's a lot of downtime you don't really have to do anything so you can just schedule it around whatever schedule you got just plan for i don't know 10 to 14 hours depending on the size of your shoulder usually the night before low oven setting you can go to work come back home at the end of the night you'll have pulled pork you know what i mean all right this thing has been uh tented and, and cooling down for hours and hours uh i just did it whenever it was convenient to me uh, you can do it whenever it's convenient to you uh it's still quite warm on the inside you can see the crust on here uh, now because we put that brown sugar in here uh you're gonna get some of that uh darkening but it's not burnt i don't know if it comes through on the on the camera very well but you can like look at this this is the kind of like oven bark you're looking to get that red color if you do this in a smoker you'll get like a thicker ring mm. all right this is a job i suggest forks and gloves for though you don't have to uh you want to take forks and just shred it uh stick it in this top part is the fat cap see how we're just able to pull apart It'll pull right off the bone, which is under here. Uh, and obviously, this is just so much meat. Share with your friends, your family. Uh, we'll have these crusty bits, and then we'll cut them up. Mix the textures throughout. But look, the bone just comes clean. Just shred it up. Now, I'm doing it on this sheet tray because uh, when you serve this in the future, you're probably going to want to reheat it. It is way easy to just shred everything onto a sheet tray and then pop the whole thing in the oven or even just portions of it. Uh, but this is usually how I do it when I do pulled pork. This is not crock pot 
pulled pork, as you can see. It's closer to like barbecue, in my opinion. Uh, like you could do the same method on a smoker and it would be full ass barbecue. Uh, but we don't all have that. Uh, I know most people have an oven or access to one, so is the thing. Anyway, we clean the bone. Uh, you can give this to your dog if you want. I might not. <laughs> anyway, this is this is pulled pork. Uh, spend some time uh, pulling this apart, making sure there's little pieces of bark, little pieces of meat. Uh, and as you work at this, like you don't have to get it all perfectly the first time, but you can see this is whole ass pulled pork. Uh, and then when you start mixing it all, uh, sometimes, like if you didn't have time to uh, salt it ahead of time, uh, as much as myself, what you can do here is uh, you'll still have, of course, the flavors on the outside. Uh, just reserve some of your spice mix uh, that you use. I'm going to switch to hands now. That's why I wore the gloves. Much easier now. Take some of that reserve spice mix, the stuff we put on the outside here. Sprinkle it all over. All on the meat. Uh, you might even just want some salt. Because you're usually on pulled pork, you put sauce. Although, obviously, I didn't make this with any barbecue sauce. Uh, that'd be something you have that you make yourself uh, or buy your favorite bottle of or whatever uh, and toss and make pulled pork sandwiches and stuff like that. But I like to not dress everything in the barbecue sauce because uh, you can make a few different dishes with pulled pork uh, if you don't. Uh, or if, at least if you don't want those flavors. Uh, like I want tacos. Man. Mm. It's seasoned all the way through. Every single bite of this has salt, not too much. Mm-hmm. No matter where I go. And of course, these outside bits have the most like direct flavor. But everything, because it cooked for so long on the bone and with the fat over it and everything, porky and delicious. Now, take the sheet tray, put your broiler on, and when you're ready to serve this again, hit this with a little more seasoning and a quick broil, uh, and it'll crisp up on the tops. Give you some more texture and stuff. And I'm telling you, uh, you can keep eating this for a long time. Pulled pork, it's so good. I'll make a little sandwich in a second and give you guys kind of like a final product overview. Uh, but this is it, you're done. Make, make whatever you want with it. Put it in tacos, put it in sandwiches, put it on mac and cheese, fill a burrito, and then take it to work or give it to your family. You have plenty of extra. Uh, okay, before we make a sandwich, we got to make some pickles for it, because the sandwich without pickles is trash, or so I hear. So a cup of water. We're going to do equal parts of vinegar. So a cup of water, cup of vinegar. This is apple cider vinegar. Pour that in there. This is apple cider vinegar with the mother. So you know it's good. Uh, we're also going to add to that uh, about then a quarter cup of sugar for this. And then uh, about a tablespoon, a little bit more. About a tablespoon of salt. And then we just stir this up. And we just need to get this dissolved and up to a boil. Uh, meanwhile, we have this deli container. We're going to fill it with onions, jalapenos, uh, and peppercorns, which I have whole peppercorns. Also, I'm going to do some mustard seed because it helps keep things crispy when you pickle them. And do that. Just a few of those. Let's do a few mustard seeds. Uh, there's already, already going to be jalapeno in it, so I'm not going to get for s some spice. But if you're just doing onions, usually red red onions are very uh, good for pickling. You can do the same exact thing. Uh, in fact, you can pickle anything very quickly, any kind of veg like this. And then we're going to do thin slices of onion. This is a Vidalia onion. So it's got a little sugar, a little sweetness. Uh, you can use a mandolin if you want. Knife is plenty fine. Uh, and I'm just looking for, kind of like how the pulled pork texture is going to be, we kind of want shreds uh, of onion. You don't have to be too particular, it just has to be nice for your applications. 
And in this case, we're putting on a sandwich. So there we go. It's plenty. For the jalapeno, I don't know how hot it is. Uh, they come in different heats, depending on uh, what time of year it is, how long it's been growing, uh, the seeds inside, stuff like that. Uh, so I'm just going to rib half of this. I don't think I'm going to save this other one for another thing. You can put a few of the seeds in there, it doesn't really matter. Depends on how hot you want it. Uh, I might serve this to people that don't super like spicy food, so I'm not going to keep it super hot. Uh, and then just small pieces of this jalapeno. You want less jalapeno than onion in this. Uh, the sugar, salt, vinegar is going to cut through some of this heat. Let me try a raw one. See how hot it is. Mm. Uh, this jalapeno has some smoky heat to it. Not very hot, though. So I'm very comfortable putting this half in. Uh, okay. So, just uh, let's do a handful of these onions. Throw them in there, do some of those, do the rest of the onions, and we'll put the rest of the jalapenos on top. It'll shake around over time, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. You don't really have to fin get finicky, just toss it in. Just toss it in. It'll be great. All right, and you can of course do this with, uh, you can add garlic to this, though garlic will change color. Uh, it'll still be fine, it'll just change color in the chemical process that's happening here. Almost to a boil. Uh, and then that's really, this is really gonna be it. We're just gonna pour the hot liquid over top of this. Nothing else is going to happen but that. So let's get this up to a boil. Uh, and then this, these pickled onions uh, will go perfect with your pulled pork, which is right here and still tasty. That's so good. I just gave some to my buddy. Trying to pawn it off on people. All right, just so I don't spill anything, I'm gonna pour it into the spout. If you have a saucepan with a spout, super handy for this kind of stuff. Anyway, so just pour it right in. You can do this in like a mason jar or any, or a bowl with a lid or anything like that. It's fine. Should come right up to the top. There we go. And then you you want to like. Keep these submerged. Here we go. And then, not tightly because the steam will make this uh, fizzle and stuff, but just like loosely. Keep a lid just like that. Uh, and there you go. That's pickles. You're done. Just let this sit on your counter uh, for a while. You want this to come all the way down to room temperature um, or at least warm. You can eat this uh, pretty quickly. I'd say give it... 20 minutes to sit like this or so while you're cleaning up and doing whatever else you're doing prepping your other stuff for dinner uh, But you can do this uh, Before dinner and these will last in your fridge uh, once this cools all the way down you can put this in your fridge and uh, They'll keep for like a week or two two three weeks even depends on how fast you go through them and uh, what you put in there But yeah, that's quick pickles All right, I'm hungry. Let's build a sandwich uh, and this is like the way that I would prep it uh, just in general, if I was feeding myself, which I am right now, or a group of people. Uh, that's why I put it on this tray. It's easy to access. Uh, it's out. It's not super clumped out. Like in a bowl, like all the fat and stuff is going to congeal just to the bottom part. Instead, now you have a little bit of the pork fat, uh, as you can see, like down here, kind of on everything. Uh, anyway, this is preheated. Uh, not all the way, but enough. Um, we're just going to take an amount that will go on the sandwich. A little bit more than this. There we go. That's plenty. Uh, and because this is cooled down, I want to reheat it. Um, and this is the best part, in my opinion, uh, is like this. Anyway, this is plenty. Uh, I'm not going to make any more than this sandwich for this. This is just a video. Uh, okay. So, on the bottom, this is important. On the bottom, we want coleslaw. A little bit more. This is going to give us crunch. This takes place of like mayo or other lubrication uh, on a sandwich. Do a little bit more. Just right there. Our pork. Right on top. Just pile it on there. Perf. 
absolutely beautiful. Try to get try to get enough crispy bits for the for the edge section for the video, and then pickled onions right on top. Gonna have some nice acidity and punch, some bite, add some texture, uh, which I think sandwiches like this need. Those peppercorns can go right on there. Okay, and just like that. There we go, huh? Looking pretty good. Get a bite. Mm. It's perfect. That's a perfect sandwich. Oh man. Yeah, the pork's seasoned perfectly. You get that, you know, whatever rub you did. But for me, a lot of black pepper, a lot of salt, a lot of uh, garlic, and uh, that sort of, um, just that spice mix. Mm. The coleslaw is the kicker, and the pickled onions. Like, they both offer their own like crunchy texture. These are a little more crunchy, and they offer a little more brightness. Uh, this offers like a cooling uh, bite throughout, so good. Do not skip, in my opinion. Mm. All right, so that's pulled pork sandwich and pulled pork in general. So good. I love this every time I make it. Done!